Hi guys, welcome back. In my last video I showed you a very nice parcel that I'd received from Boris, and in the parcel uh, was this uh, disc detainer lock, which I was quite worried about because I've never picked a disc detainer lock, I've never been able to pick them, and um, uh, this lock would basically decide um, whether uh, I was just useless at picking disc detainer locks, or the disc detainer padlock that I do own. Um, it's just a one-off. So, um, like I said, I was very excited to have this lock to try a uh, uh, disc detainer picking on a different lock, um, but I was also quite worried. Well, I'm pleased to report that I was able to pick this lock after probably an hour of uh, constant sort of uh, picking attempts. Uh, I finally figured out how to pick it. Um, I'll just show you that it does work. Now, I want to talk about disc detainer locks um, sort of in a beginner's eyes or in the eyes of a public or uh, a member of public who uh, isn't involved in lock sports and maybe don't know what they are. So, um, you can identify a disc detainer lock by its key. As you can see, um, it's sort of rectangular shaped on the end and we have all these angled cuts and inside we've got quite a wide open keyway and inside we've got a series of discs uh, which all have an, a groove cut in them and when all these discs are rotated the correct amount um, the, which when you insert the key that's what happens when all the discs are rotated a certain, um, a certain amount uh, all the grooves will line up, a sidebar will fall in and you'll be able to turn the key fully and unlock the lock. So it seems like a really good idea and uh, disc detainer locks um, are actually the the mechanism is used in uh, high security Abloy and Abus locks but uh, the difference between those and these uh, cheap Chinese locks is first of all the body is not as secure as it might seem although this is incredibly heavy uh, it isn't actually uh, really all that strong. The shackle probably isn't hardened. Uh, some quality control problems such as really rough uh, edges here. I've cut myself on this rough uh, edging. You have to be really careful. And also in this uh, shackle hole here, if my camera will be able to adapt, uh, you can see um, it's actually uh, rusty in that hole. So um, they're really not very well made locks. Um, and also, uh, you probably again can't see, but um, the actual housing for these discs is made of plastic. And the main difference out of all is that an abloy lock will have um, a series of cuts on the discs that are uh, slightly shallower than the, the gate. And uh, these basically make it possible to tell when you're picking um, what's a, a true gate and what's a false gate. So, talking about picking, what do we use to pick these kinds of locks? Well, there's a couple of tools that you can get. Here's one and here's the other. Um, this is a front tensioning a disc detainer pick. As you can see, we've got this little flag here, which is uh, what you use to manipulate the discs. And we have um, another portion here. This is what you use to tension the lock. This bit basically slots in and catches on the first disc in the lock. And the first disc, if you apply tension to the first disc in the lock, that's how you tension uh, all the discs, basically. Um, but also, uh, you can use the last disc to tension the lock, and that's what this tool is right here. Uh, this section here is designed to tension the last disc, and right here is our flag. I've never used this tool, in fact, I've never found a lock to fit it. Um, you know, it would need modifying to fit in any of the disc detainer locks I have. Uh, likewise, this one, uh, when I got it, the tip was just like a blob of metal, and um, I had to file it down quite considerably uh, to make it fit in this lock. And uh, if you're wondering how much to file down the tip of your disc detainer pick, um, basically file it down until you can move the, the tip of the pick freely in between two discs. Alright, so, um, uh, Bosnian Bill has done uh, tutorials on disc detainer lock picking, a few people have done tutorials, so this 
maybe isn't going to be a tutorial as such, but I will say that on Bosnia and Bill's tutorial it's very um, misleading because he picks the lock in seconds, excuse me, and um, he says, you know, it, it's really uh, easy to do, and uh, that isn't always the case. In fact, some disc detainer locks cannot be picked for whatever reason. They've got really stiff discs. Um, and so it, it just depends on your lock. Um, so I'm going to use this tool basically to rotate all the discs as far to the right as I can. Thus. And then what I like to do is, because uh, otherwise if I were just to stick this tool in and apply tension, I'd be applying tension to the first two discs. You have to be really careful. And what I like to do is I like to stick my pick in, and I like to rotate the second disc just a touch counterclockwise, and so that when I do uh, stick the pick in to tension the lock, uh, it doesn't go uh, all the way in. You can just about see that the second disc there has been rotated uh, this way, so it's at a slight angle. That means that when I do put my pick in here, I'm not tensioning both uh, discs. So I'm going to stick my pick right to the back, uh, pull back on the last disc, which is set. Now I, I've been picking on this lock for like two days practicing, so I'm very familiar with it, uh, and just be aware of that. Um, so I'm going to number the discs uh, one back here and uh, six right here. Uh, there are six discs in the lock. So that's number two set. I'm now spinning in between two discs. Okay, three is set. Uh, four is set. And we're open. Okay, I'd like to say simple as that. Not really. It, like I said, it took like an hour for me to figure out how to pick this lock. Uh, if you're new to disc detainer lock picking, then uh, look at the key and see how much they need to be. These discs need to be rotated. Um, also, uh, when we look at the key, it looks like we have only four cuts. When you look in the lock, we've got six discs, and that's because, like I said, the first and last disc can be used to tension the core. So there's actually a disc right here and a disc on the end here as well. Okay. Um, so, well, it didn't take me very long, but like I said, I've been practicing uh, for many, many days actually now, um, or at least a couple, and uh, if you're actually very careful, you can rotate the first disc counterclockwise, lock it, and rotate it back clockwise, and lock it again. Okay. and uh, basically to lock it up again you just stick the tool and rotate all the discs as far to the left as you can and that's it all locked up and working okay a uh, few things if your lock doesn't uh, want to pick then um, there's one thing I'll uh, I'll say it's basically uh, the sidebar in these locks uh, isn't under any spring tension, it's just relying on gravity to drop down into the gate uh, when all the gates are aligned. And um, uh, this, this is the reason why when sometimes when you hold the lock a certain way the key will turn partially, there will be a bit of a resistance and then you'll be able to turn it the rest of the way. So if you find that maybe you've left one of these locks out there in, in the weather uh, what can happen is the sidebar can get all greasy and gunched up and it will actually um, not drop in as easily as it did when the lock was new. So I wouldn't recommend using these locks to secure anything valuable. Uh, there is actually another technique of opening these uh, as well as using a disc detainer pick um, and it is to pop this cap off. So basically what happens in factory they basically squish, uh, well at least stick all the mechanism in. Then this ring here, um, it basically has a groove in it where there's a, a C-clip and um, they, they have a machine that compresses the clip 
they pop this cover in and the clip will expand and basically lock this plug in here and it's not really a good way of uh, securing uh, all the stuff in here because what you can do is take a screwdriver and you can prise this off um, and all the discs and stuff will fall out and the lock literally just falls open so um, I wouldn't rely on these locks too much for security like I said if you're going to spend a lot of money on an Abloy or an Abus then it's worth it but uh, all the same these locks are very fun to pick and it's a I guess it's a handy skill to have uh, because there are quite a number of disc detainer lo locks out there so anyway uh, thank you as always for watching this video a huge thank you to Boris for sending me this disc detainer lock by the way uh, it's an Amtec disc detainer lock I'm sure you're aware by now anyway uh, as always thanks very much for watching if you need any advice on disc detainer lock picking then please do get in touch and as always I will see you in my next video